Have a seat, guys. Yeah, man. Uh, before we begin uh, this afternoon, I've got uh, something to give you uh, some of the flavor of the urgency of the conversation that we're about to have. Uh, Winnipeg is known across Canada as a major center for gang activity. Winnipeg is the, of all the cities in the country, has the highest rate of gang-related homicides. It's a really significant matter in this city. Across the country, there are about 300 street gangs, uh, at least 11,000 members across the country, most likely more. They're hard to count. And to set the mood for the afternoon and the urgency of the issue that we're addressing, let's have a look at this. It was a path of destruction through the North End. In less than one hour, three people shot, three families changed forever. Well, that's scary, I hope they catch him. It's when you talk to people like Alfred James Cook, you hear it, people are nervous. After hearing them gunshots, no, I don't feel safe. The most amount of money, $6,000, the volunteer organization has offered for tips on the shooter or shooters. Crime Stopper says the timeliness and bigger than usual cash reward matches the urgency of the crimes. Police have not made an arrest in the shootings and are dealing with the fact that some in the community may be having trouble trusting officers enough to share information with them. We've got to break through that barrier and develop relationships and get, cause them to understand that they're part of the solution. Uh, the public has to work with the police, the police have to work with the public. They've even set up a mobile unit on Selkirk Avenue hoping people will talk to investigators about what they may know about the shootings. It's normal. You hear, you hear gunshot, <laughs> it's shot, normal. You know, someone got shot. Yeah. yeah. Like if you hear albums going by, it's like, oh, who died today? Who died last night? Like, yeah. It's normal, man. It's, it's like weekend. normal growing up. <laughs> or it was Thirsty Thursdays, whatever. Yeah. And why do you call them Thirsty Thursdays? Is there something about Thursday? Because it's, it's like just like before Friday, Friday and or... just get thirsty and you just want to drink party and just relax. Sort of things get get more violent toward the, the end of the week? Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Is that oh, when yeah. things are worst? Yeah. 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 Is there something different about these shootings? These two guys killed and this 13-year-old girl shot? There's something different about I think one? it's really different because they didn't have a reason. I mean, it was just a randomly guy with a mask who came and shot people for fun, maybe. You know what I mean? So those are the voices of three of the guys who've agreed to join me on stage today. They are Miles Mentuck. Miles is uh, 26. He's stepfather of three kids. Chris Kershane, he's 28. He's the father of two little kids. And Joseph J.J. Choken is uh, 18 and not the father of anybody at the moment. <laughs> but uh, they've all agreed to come today. Uh, and they've agreed to come because back in November, they sat down with those of us from CBC and agreed to have a no holes barred conversation which they talked about their lives in and out of the gang, how they got there, how they got out, the struggles that they face, the challenges in their own lives, the fears that they have about going straight, and the challenges of, of school, work, family, kids, spouses. And they've agreed to come back today and talk about some of those kinds of things so that you can get a better picture. And so uh, we're, we're gonna start, I wanna ask you all guys, and maybe Chris, I could start with you. Uh, when you were involved in gang life, what were you doing on a daily basis? You know, just trying to build my rep up. What's know? that mean, build your rep up? Like going in the streets, getting into some crazy, crazy stuff. You know? What kind of stuff? Like kicking open doors. Kicking open stuff. doors, whose doors? Dealers, you know, rivals, uh, doing in stores, you know, going out there and just like making people know that you're not to be messed with, you know. Okay, Joseph, JJ, you, you're you're just 18. You you spent time in the youth center when you were a actively involved in gang life. What were you doing? I was uh, selling drugs, um, drinking, partying a lot, uh, pimping girls. 
basically just basically three things that I really wanted was that money, power, and respect, you know what I mean, at NPR. Now, M Miles, you, you've spent a bit of time inside, too. When you were involved in gangs, what were you doing? Same, selling drugs, uh, doing criminal activity, stealing. How did you guys get involved in gangs? Where did that start? Did, did someone approach you one day and say, how would you, would you like to be part of this gang? It was uh, mostly family, because most of my family members were like, down with the gangsters, down for different causes. So your, your family members were members of gangs already? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And so how old were you? What's your earliest recollection of getting involved in that kind of stuff? <clears throat> 11 years old. Yeah. And what, what, what happened when you were 11? Um, I just moved to the city and, you know, my, my mom was hanging around all kinds of gangsters. And Everywhere I was, <coughs> everywhere I went, there was gangsters there, and you know they're hustling. And they had, you know, nice jewelry and stuff like that, and that type of stuff I wanted. So when you're 11, what what do they get you to do? You know, like basically, go on missions, like go on a, missions. Yeah, be a mule, or you know, a mule delivering drugs. Yeah, yep. go go burning down houses, stuff like Bur that. Did, sorry, did you say burning down houses? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Why? Why would you be told to burn down a house? Just to, you know, mission, you, you don't ask questions, you just say, okay. You mean somebody higher up in the gang tells yeah, you to do that? To prove yourself. So, yeah. what you said, Miles, to do what? Prove yourself. To prove yourself, to who? To, uh, to the other, to, to the higher ups in the gang? Yeah. And, and JJ, what was that like for you? What, what, what were you, what, what kind of stuff were you doing and how old were you when you started? I started when I was like 11 years old, but back a year later, I, uh, seen a lot of shit when I was growing up, and I was like, trouble home, so I, because I grew up in the gang life myself, like, like automatically, like, I didn't, I didn't get put in the gang life, it was just right there. So, tell like, us, oh, you said you grew up in a troubled home, what, 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 what do you mean by that? I saw alcoholism, I saw fighting, you know, my, my mom, when my dad scrapping out, I saw all the brothers just talking a lot of shit to me, saying, oh, you mm -hmm. gotta prove yourself, mm -hmm. I see my dad get beat up by his own gang because he left it, you know, got me and my mom, how got held by the windows and stuff. Got, got put there just to watch my own dad get beat up at stage 10. And that's where I started like, like chilling with the gang and I beat them up and I started slanging drugs for them. And when I hit 11, that's when I started fighting people. And that's when they started noticing that. You know? Ever since when I started fighting, that's when they just kind of like told me you're in the gang, you know, come chill with us. Hey, you were fighting so, people. Why were you doing that? Because uh, I had to de defend myself from, from other people on the streets. See, and would the gang send you out to do that kind of thing? The gang was just kind of like, let me be. He was like, go post up here. You will post up at the benches because there was a spot in our hood that was called the benches. Yes. All we got to do is wait for people who walk by. We were in the wrong color. We just look like they're in a the gang. We just go check them and say, what's up? And if we don't run, if they, if they talk and give us answers, we would still beat them up, but we'll give them a chance. We'll beat them up. Just How old were you when you got your first gun? 13. I was, I was 11. You were 11. And yeah. you were 13. Yeah. And Miles? I never had guns. You never had knives. guns? Yeah. You had knife, knives. Uh, knives. 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 Chris, where did, where did you get these guns? Um, <clears throat> well, my first gun was, was uh, this little like, six-shooter handgun. And uh, I don't know, we were chilling at this spot there. Some dude that was just selling weed. And then uh, I don't know, we were just kind of chilling out. And then I, uh, I was checking out his house there because he's all like, go ahead, grab some, some stuff there. And then I seen this handgun and I seen a bunch of cartridges and I was like, damn, I want, I want that. So I just took it and I was all like, this guy wants it. Then he's gonna have so to you took his gun. What what'd you do with it? I just went blast him off, you know. Who, what, what did you shoot at? You know, like people, you know, stuff, houses. Cars, and garages. JJ, you said you were 13 when you got. I got a shotgun, sawed-off shotgun. What'd you do with it? I just kind of played with it. You just played with it. That's about it. Just played with it. Shot it off in the field just to see if it worked. I'm scared people with it. Just don't shoot them. Just pull it out on them. Just see what their reaction is. So now, Miles, you had knives. Did you have machetes too? No. No. no? Like Chris, you had machetes. Right? Oh yeah, that was like common when I was growing up. It's it, it so much different from now and, and, like, when I was growing up, I grew up in, like, the 90s. That's when everything was kind of, like, 
a G code. Everyone stood by the G code. What's the G code? It's like you know, don't 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 talk about stuff that get you in trouble. Like don't rat, you know. Don't rat. Like don't say no. what you're doing with the don't gang. Tell, yeah, yeah don't like like don't 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 give no names, you know. So what you're doing here today, is this, is this ratting? No, because uh, I'm not a part of the gang no more, and I'm not naming no names. So I'm just talking about my personal experiences. Mm. Can I ask you before we move on, what's the worst thing you ever did as a member of a gang? Uh, there's a lot of things I, I did that, you know, it was pretty bad. You know, going inside houses kicking open doors, you know, beating down people in front of their family members, you know. Beating, pe beating down people in front of their families? Yeah. What about you, JJ? Stabbing up my own brother. Stabbing? Up my own brother. Stabbed your own brother? Yeah, because we he was in a different gang. Yeah. I was with my gang. Yeah. So one morning I got up and just went downstairs, and he was downstairs, like, trying to act all hard to me, like, talking shit about my gang. And I start, and I kind of flipped the channel on him, started changing channels on him. He was getting mad at me, so I was tempting him. So when he started scrapping out, I grabbed scissors and I stabbed him three times. I almost killed him. I got charged for attempted murder. Sat in youth center for three days, and I got released, and he had a restraining order against me. You got one? Three days. Yeah? Yeah, I only sat in there for three days. What's the worst thing you ever did, Mom? Uh, home invasion. A home invasion. And whose house were you invading? Was this a innocent person? Was this no, a gang-involved person? Drug dealer. Yeah. So, how much of the stuff you guys did was it? Uh, did it uh, involve ordinary non-gang people? No, when you were, like, everyone was surrounded by gangsters. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. Like if you're you're chilling with a gang, you're just gonna be chilling with your yeah. gangster friends. You know? Yeah. Pretty much. Right? Like, when a pig is one big ghetto. You know what I mean? Everybody knows who's someone who's in a gang. Everybody knows who's someone who's affiliated with a gang. You know, like one big ghetto. That's what I think about one big. So, what part did the cops play in suppressing or controlling your activity as a gang member? Were they effective? Not really. Just, you know, just locking us up to go chill with more gangs. Like you, you spent what? How many years in jail? Like, Four. I, I grew up in jail, like I grew up in the youth center, grew up in the adult facilities. Yeah. And JJ, you've been in the youth center. I've been in the youth center for like a couple of years. Yeah. Now Miles, you spent less time inside, right? Yeah. Less. Yeah. So, so when does the light go on when you say, I don't want to do this anymore? What, what happens? Like what led to it? Like for me, it was watching my my family grew up, and it was like, they were this small, then they grew up this big when I got out, then they were this big. So you'd um, be inside, and they'd grow when you were inside. Yeah, and so then you'd when come I out get and out, they, yeah. and all of a sudden, it's like a, a new family member, like, who's this, you know? And it's your cousin. Oh, yeah, I remember you. But why was that well. such a, something that made you want to change? Because I knew, like, every time I went in, the, the gangsters, they weren't kind of... They weren't holding up to their end of the bargain. Like the, you, you do stuff for them, and if you get caught, they take care of you while you're in jail. That doesn't happen. They didn't like do that. that. No. No. Yeah. So I was all like, "Well, I want to be with my real family. My real family's growing up, you know, while I'm inside." Yeah. And I didn't want my kids to grow up like that, where I just see them just kind of growing up little by little, you know. And so, JJ, what was it like for you? When, when what was the turning point? What made you it decide made to you leave it? I had to leave it was, uh, I didn't want to sit in jail. That's number one. Number two, I had to, there was no girls in jail, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's number two. And number three, I wanted my freedom and I wanted to show my family. Yeah. That's basically the three things I go by. But when you say your family, you said earlier, you, your family was a mixed up it kind was, of... It was a mess. My family was a mess, but I still kind of like, I was like, I, I, I was the, young, the youngest brother. I had three yeah. brothers. I'm my oldest brother left, so I was like the second brother. Okay. So yeah. I had to be like the second yeah. brother. And so, Miles, what was it for you? What made you change? Uh, I got caught. You doing, got caught? Yeah, doing my criminal activities. Yes. Like and? And I didn't want to be in jail for the rest of my life, so I started changing my life around. 
Were there, there, were there gangs in jail? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And was there gang activity going on in jail? Oh, yeah. Yeah? And did you have to affiliate with a gang while you were inside? Well, well not for me, because I just started my own thing while I was in there, right? I just started taking people into cells and knocking them on their back. And so you started your own gang inside? Yeah. I was like, this is yeah. my range. You guys will come here and disrespect me. Yeah. I own this. And didn't you do the same thing? I did the same thing, but I put a bag of chips and a drink out in front of my door and kind of recruited them. I asked them, do you want these chips? And they're like, yeah. If they eat them, you finish everything, I say you're mine for the rest of the year. That's how I kind of made my own little crew. So you there. owned the other people inside the youth yeah. center? Yeah. yeah. Well, what did that get you? That got me, like, uh, respect. I took care of them, yeah. and they kind of watched me. They kind of helped me out, too. So yeah. And the problem went down. Okay, so, you've, so you decide you're going to leave this behind. You get out of jail. What's it like you trying to lead the straight life, then? What's... You're shaking your head, Chris. It's hard, man. What's hard about it? Because you, you try to get resumes, you try to get out there, and then they have that thing that says, are you bondable? Are you bondable? Criminal record check. Yeah, criminal record check, and you're all like, nobody wants to deal with a person like me. You know, I've been in for you know, a bunch of armed robberies and you know, assaults. Can I ask you what thought you gave when you were doing the worst of your worst stuff? What were you thinking about, about the people that you were doing it to? I didn't. I was thinking money. You didn't think about that? About no, I was how about it the hurt cash. them, how it scared them, how it, you know, home invasion? No, never thought of it. You didn't think about it? No, not at the time. No? It's just like something you've got to no. do, you know? Now, Joseph, we were talking yesterday, and you said you, uh, when you got out, you went to, what, you, you, you apologized to some of the people. I apologized to some of the people. People just gave me dirty looks and just like, pushed me away and tried to fight me. And there's some people that accept it, but most of them don't because they're, 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 they still think you're in that gang. Or they still think I used to be two-faced to them, faces like that. Did the other gang guys try to get you back in? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Because when I left the gang, three months later, I got kidnapped. And, uh, you got what? I got kidnapped. You got kidnapped when you left the gang? Yeah, then I guess they wanted me back in the gang. They asked me questions why I left the gang. I told them why I left the gang. And they just kind of like gave me a bro shake and told me, go ahead, do whatever you gave want. Gave you a do. what? A bro shake. What's that? It's like, it's like, like it's not a respect. Yeah. You know, people, usually people get beat up, but I didn't get beat up. I got bro shake. That's called deboarding. Deboarding is just beat up. Okay. All right. Okay, so you... So it's hard when you get out. How did Build come along? We heard from Sean Loney this morning about what they're doing with home renovation and teaching trades. In fact, Chris, you were even in some of Sean's photos. Yeah. Uh, what was the, how did you guys discover Build as a place that would accept you and would let you start training uh, and work? My, my probation officer told me about it and said, these guys might give you a chance. I'm not going to guarantee you, but you fill out an application and then, uh, see what's going on. So I, I, I actually got their number and I called down there and I said, well, can I get an interview? I just got out of jail, like I was straight up with them. And I was all like, well, I just got out of jail, I have no training. Uh, the only kind of job I ever had was packing a trailer and that lasted about two days. And, you know, I was back to the gang life. And then they said, well, come down, we'll give you an interview and see how it goes. And then since June of 2008, I've just been going straight up, it feels like hitting the top. And what's it, what was it like for you, Miles, when you, I, I, how did you find this Bill? This guy. Through yeah. Chris? Yeah. Did you know him through gang well, I connections? Went to, I went to high school with him. Okay. Yeah. So you, so you come to build and what happens? And they're teaching me how to be a carpenter. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Better than being in a gang or being hanging around with gang members. Sitting around there waiting for the now, next phone call. Sometimes gang life looks pretty uh, appealing in a certain way. There's lots of money, there's drugs, there's guns, there's excitement, there's girls. There's everything. Is that? Just it's like everyone's trying to kill you. Everybody's trying to kill you. Yeah, you've got the cops trying to kill you, you've got the haters trying to kill you, and then the people there are jealous of you making all this money and selling all these drugs. They're trying to get 
that you killed too. Like I, I, I got kidnapped too. I was bad drug deal went wrong, and then all of a sudden I'm almost going out to Headingley, and then I just finally slipped out of my my uh, my winter jacket and hopped out the van and like sucked in. Come on. Man. So you got away from these people who kidnapped. Um, some people might think you guys are all gang guys, former gang guys, you're dangerous, that you should have been in jail for a very long time. What do you say to those people who say punishment has not been harsh enough for you guys? What do you say back to them? You know what? <sighs> you know, we, 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 we keep on working to... To, to better ourselves and stuff like that, but uh, when when do uh, we stop being ex-cons and start being, you know, normal people? You know, because I I paid my debt to the society and I helped the inner city. You know, I helped people on welfare, save some money. You know, I'm doing doing my best. I'm, I'm going to school. I stay out of trouble. I watch my kids. I teach them how to. You know, be good, good kids. What do you, JJ? What do you say to that? I think that uh, they should not judge us because we have a different life experience than them. You know, like, just let us live, and we can consider our change whenever we want, and whenever it's time to change. Don't put pressure on us and say, "Oh, you guys gotta change now." Mm -hmm. It's like giving someone who's trying to quit smoking and tell them, "You gotta quit today, right now, cold turkey." Mm -hmm. Like two days later, he's going to be failed. He's going to start smoking again. It's like telling us that. And what about for you, Ma? Um, everyone deserves a second chance. Mm. Or a third. <laughs> or a third. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you worry about? Do you worry about falling back into gang life? You know those guys that you knew, phone you up, got a good deal going on? Is that, do you worry about that? I don't worry about anything. You don't worry about it? Uh, I don't worry about any of them. No? They're done. It's the time. And what do you dream about? What are your, what's your vision for the future? Uh, owning my own construction company, mm -hmm. being a construction manager, you know, going across Canada, building buildings, mm -hmm. stuff like that. What about for you, Miles? Uh, JJ? I want to be a correctional officer for the Manitoba Youth Center. <laughs> Say that again? I want to be a correctional Sorry. officer for the Manitoba Youth Center. You do? Yeah. You know, Why? Because I lived that life. And I can tell these guys in Tillman that life. Uh -huh. you know, I lived it too. You know, have something in common. So I get them out of the gang. You know. Do you miss gang life? No. No? No. I do, for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Like, I miss the money. I miss the girls. I miss the party. You know, all, they, all they do is use you. All they do is use you. Well, that's why I kind of let go. Let me live. Well, guys, thanks a lot. Yeah. And they are JJ Choken, Miles Mentuck, Chris Shane. I want to say a special thanks to uh, CBC producer uh, Donna Carrero, who did some of the original research on this, and Sean Loney and the folks at Build for just letting us in the door to uh, hear these guys tell their, their story. Thank you.